kick right in. Um, this is, like most of these, such a difficult thing to do when it comes to doing something that probably almost everybody has used, but maybe not um, in a way that gets my, my typical refrain, the computer to work for them rather than them, them working for the computer. Um, we probably all know that the first killer app for computers was the spreadsheet, VisiCalc, back in the day of um, the Apple, the very first Apple, the Apple II. Um, VisiCalc was the first spreadsheet and it was one of the first tools that made a computer almost indispensable to people. And uh, people have been using spreadsheets since, well, I suppose that was probably around about 1976, 1977, which was a long, long time ago. Um, so what I'm going to be doing is going through numbers as a spreadsheet and then um, doing some very basic things for those of you who are perhaps new to spreadsheet spreadsheeting. But for those of you who have been using a spreadsheet for some time, um, I'll also be highlighting the differences, what makes numbers quite special. So without further ado, I will share my screen with you. And this is something I actually want to show you before we even dive into numbers. Whenever you create a new document in both numbers, keynote, and pages, you're always by default presented with the choose a template. Now, if you always use or in the main use a particular document as your base point, in this case, say a blank document, one of the things that you can do is go to your numbers preferences or your pages or your keynote pref preferences, and over here, you can use a, a template. So I'm gonna say, okay, I wanna use blank. Ready? So now when I choose new document, instead of opening the browser, I get a blank document. If I ever want to go to the template chooser again, I just hold down the alt key or option key and I can choose new for template chooser and then I go back to my template chooser. So a little bit of an aside, but a little bit of a power tip for those of you who use um, pages, numbers or keynote. Okay, so um, this is a, a, the big difference between Excel and numbers is with Excel, you have this infinite grid where you've got probably something like 650 gazillion rows going down and 650 gazillion columns going across. And that's really nice, especially if you're trying to manage the economy of a small country. But most people don't do that. Most people will be using a spreadsheet to do um, a, a year range, several year ranges. And one of the challenges that you've got when you're doing a spreadsheet um, with this infinite grid that Excel does is when you want to insert columns in existing spreadsheets. So let me just open an existing one over here so you can see what I mean. Over here, we've got a, a, a little spreadsheet where I've got some predefined content over here. And if I wanted to add more content at the bottom, but the format wasn't quite right and I wanted to add a column, it would mess up everything above and below. With, um, with numbers, what we can do is we can create simple tables where if I wanted to add more information below, instead of just extending my spreadsheet, which I can do by dragging these little handles over here, I can just go and say, insert a table. And now I've got a choice of tables. If I wanted to mimic this exactly, I'll choose this. And now I've got another table. So I could have one table for one thing, another table for another. We can link them together as you'll see shortly, but I'm not necessarily stuck with this grid and have to move things around. It becomes very easy for me to manage the layout. And if I was to open one of the spreadsheets from the template, you'll see exactly what I mean. Uh, let's say, take the travel planner, this will do. So over here, you see I've got a table, but I've also got images on there. I've got text on there and I can add graphs and charts. And if I want some more table data, I can do that. Um, I've got number of sheets, much like Excel. So I can have number of worksheets on my, on my spreadsheet. 
And they're very free form. I can add shapes, much like Pages and Keynote. I can turn these shapes into text boxes. I can type things that I want to. I can add another table here. So very free form, but still very, very powerful. Okay, so let me just delete this guy and delete this table. So in my first table over here, as you could expect, I have column headers, I have row headers. And if I come to my table format here, you can see I can choose how many headers that I want. So here I've got one header. Now I've got two row headers. Here I've got three column headers. So I can adjust how many headers and how many column headers and how many row headers that I've got. I can also add footers over here. To increase the number of columns I've got, I can just drag across. Or if I know exactly how many uh, columns I want, I can say, okay, give me 20 columns and it extends it automatically. So I can build my, my table any way that I want to. I'm gonna take this back to one. I'm gonna take this back to one over here. So let's have a look at, at adding stuff in. So if I wanted to um, type, um, let's, let's say um, going down here, we have uh, four items. We're gonna have dogs. We're gonna have cats. Now, if I wanted to, um, is it mice, geese? I can type whatever I want to over here. Over here, I want to have months. So we're gonna be looking at the number of dogs that are purchased, caught, bought, sold, whatever in a month. So I go here, January. I'm gonna hit tab and go to the next one, February. See, I'm only typing Feb, but it auto-completes it, knows what I'm talking about. Now, if I want to auto-complete and auto-fill these, all I have to do is select the first two. And because I have a sequence here, January and February, you see this little yellow dot here? If I drag this out, it's going to auto complete it. So we'll go to December. There we go. That's all I want to. So I'm going to drag these guys back in. And you note, I can't drag it in any further if I've got text filled in here. So if I added another column and I put just a little bit of something in here, I couldn't make it any smaller unless I deleted that column or I took the contents out of that column. Right. So there's our columns, there's our headers. So let's say, for example, um, I'm going to, let me just add a, a column before here. So we've got our columns. I'm going to click on this little chevron over there and I'm gonna say, add a column before. And now I've got a new column. So let's type in year. And let's say I want this to be in 20, 2015. Right. And I hit return. Now, if I start typing, numbers it just carries on and lets me do this but let's have a look over here if i start typing again and i hit the letter d it looks in the column above and it says have i typed anything with d in it before yes i've typed in dogs so i hit the down arrow and select that i can just auto complete that similarly for cats similarly for mice and for geese so autocomplete is a very, very useful thing to do. Um, just to complete this, uh, the interface, before we move on to autofilling and some more powerful stuff, um, the, the, the interface looks very similar to pages and numbers. You've got your tables, charts, text, shapes, media, comments. You've got your format bar on the side. So if you've learned Keynote and Pages, you already know about 80% of the, the interface for numbers. All you have to learn, I say all you have to learn, is spreadsheeting functions, which can be um, interesting and can be, can be challenging. Okay, so we've looked at autofill for years and dates going across. Let's just add another table quickly so I can demonstrate. Um, let's say, for example, we only wanted to add the months which were at the beginning of quarters. So if I go January and then I go February, March, April, which is the next, which would be the first month in the second quarter, and I select these two, it knows that these two are three months apart and it'll fall down automatically for me. So now I have two years with the first month in each quarter automatically put in there. Similarly, I could do that for numbers. If I do one, hit return two, and then select these two cells and drag this little ye a yellow dot, 
it will auto complete my series just by adding one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I can do that left and I can do that right. But by the same token, if I'm doing things in let's say steps of five, so if I do five here and I do 10 here, and I select these two, it will range them down 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. So once again, if you understand how the program works, ideally you're getting it to work really well for you rather than vice versa. Okay. Let it fill in, let it do stuff for you. Okay, um, then one of the beauties of, of this, this spreadsheet is that often when you want to do calculations, um, it becomes um, quite difficult to, to, to navigate where you are. One of the nice things about numbers is instead of using absolute values, so over here, if I wanted to add some things together, um, let's say I had a, a five in here and a seven in here, and let's just ignore this as March for the moment. I wanted that to equal January plus February. I could say equal, and I'm hoping it's not gonna let me down here because it wasn't behaving all that well earlier. I have my little formula bar. I can move this out the way. If I click in January, now, for some reason, I'm not quite sure why it's doing it because it's only doing it with my new spreadsheets. Um, there was an update on the weekend, so I'm not sure if something's happened here. But typically, if I wanted this cell to equal that cell plus that cell, I click on the first one, I click on the second one, and you can see my formula equals C2 plus D2. And if I hit return, you can see it's 12. And again, that's what's powerful about spreadsheets. I can change this value to make that 20, and that automatically adds up. Now, to show you what I was talking about earlier, I'm just going to delete this because I don't need this one anymore, is I'm going to open up a fairly complex spreadsheet that we use for one of our clients where we want to keep track of the jobs that we've done for them and how long it takes us to get through the process. We just want to make sure we're on top of things. So over here, let me zoom in a little bit, you'll see that I've got a column that this is, this is for our repair logs. The data was booked in, the date of assessment, and the number of days from working to assessment. Now, you can see this is this should be um, that minus that. And you'd expect that to equal G2 minus F, uh, F2. But if I double click on the cell, you can see it actually uses the names of the rows and columns. So date of book-in job and date of assessment. So when you're coming back to work on a spreadsheet that you worked on for quite some time and then haven't gone to it, if you click in your formulae, instead of just saying G2, F2, it'll actually give you the names of the cells and their reference inside that spreadsheet. So I think this is one of the very powerful things in, in uh, numbers that, that I like a lot. Okay, let's look at um, another spreadsheet that I've kind of set up as a, a sample. So if we go to animals template, this is a, a more complete one of what I did earlier. So we've got over here, dogs, cats, mice, 20, 2005, 2006, 2007. And I put these all in for some stuff I'm going to do later. Now, to save us having to um, automatic to, to type all of these in, I'm just going to select all of these and just so that we've got some numbers to work with. I'm just going to select this and I'm auto, going to auto complete all of those. And I now have some values in all those cells. Okay, so if I want to add all of these up, I've got a row at the bottom where I want to insert things. I want to insert my, my, my calculation. So I could, if I knew the calculation, I could say, okay, that equals and I get my format bar, and I know there's a sum calculation. And can you see, it gives me every instance of calculations that use the, use the word sum. And you can see there's a lot that use the word sum, more than I know what to do. So that's one way we can do it. Do it. Let's delete that. The other way is at the top here, we've got insert. And if I choose insert, there are six items which are typically used, which it, 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 it gives us access to. So if I click on sum, it automatically selects the column above. And now I have 202 units or 202 um, animals in all of those years in the month of January. Now, if I want to use the same formula going across, all I do is drag this to the right 
and now I have that total as well. So that's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it is I could select this column. Now, if I click here and I select this column, it selects everything as well as the bottom row, which isn't necessarily what I want. I only want the values. I don't want the header and I don't want the footer. A quick way of selecting just the values, in fact, this is the one I want, there's no point in adding up your years, is you double click on the header and watch what happens. Let me just zoom in a little bit more so you can see what I'm doing. A little bit bigger. If I double click on January, can you see how it just selects everything between the header and the footer? And down at the bottom here, some of those values that we had in insert appear, and I can just tell at a glance, 202 is the sum, the average is 10.1, the minimum was four, the maximum was 20. I can actually take this and I can drag this into that cell and I get exactly the same formula that I had before, which I can use to fill right. Which is, which is quite useful. Um, by the same token, let's just double click on it again. If I drag up the averages, you can see the averages and now I've got the average of those, of those values. Okay, um, let's have a look at formatting these values. I've just used a couple of simple calculations. I'm gonna go into some, uh, a couple more complex ones because remember this is an overview for noobs. So let me open up another spreadsheet that I've got prepared. And Apple asked us to do a report on the number of people who were attending our, um, our, our, our events. So uh, I went in and I built stuff on it. So these were the number of visits, um, sorry, these were the number of tickets that were sold, these were the number of people that attended, and this is the percentage of people who attended versus the number of people who took out tickets. I've got a total over here, let me zoom in slightly so you can see me down at the bottom. I've got a total, I've got an average of tickets sold, uh, sold and people who've attended. So if I was to select these, um, and I look at my formatting over here, I can change the number uh, by default automatically because there's a number in there, I can make it a number. If I select this one, I can make it text. I can also insert, so the standard ones you'd expect from a spreadsheet, currency, percentage, fractions, and so on. I can make it text, I can force it to be text. So if I've got numbers in there, but I want them to appear to be text, like serial numbers, I can do that over here. But one of the beauties of this is uh, there are a number of additional um, formatting items that we can use um, to, to um, make filling in a lot easier. Just before I do that, though, one of the things I'd like to show you is if I have a new uh, spreadsheet over here, we do have a number of predefined styles that we can use to make our documents look a lot prettier, much like our word processor. But there is also a very, very nice little functionality that's built into pages, numbers, and keynote, both for my tables and my charts. And if you're ever preparing a presentation or you're preparing some numbers for a client who has a particular logo, I'd like to show you this function. So if I click further over here, you can see I can create my own styles. So if I go in here and I change my colors and I change my fonts, if I click plus, it'll make a style based on that. But one of the things that we can do is we can create a style from an image. So let's say, for example, you can probably see on my desktop, I have an FND logo and an APSA logo. If I decide to um, change, my, uh, change the style, I can use the FMB logo and apply it, just add a footer over here. You can see instantly, the um, style of the, the logo looks like the FMB logo. I think that would be quite impressive to, to, to the, the client. Let's add another one. And I want to um, create style from another image. This time I'll use the APSA logo. And there's the APSA logo. So I can play around, around with this nice little technique. Again, I said this is available in Keynote and Numbers as well. Okay, let's have a look at um, our, our, our various cell formats. So of the um, presentations we do, they're typically either Mac OS, Mac OS, iPad OS, and iOS, or Mac OS, 
or iPad OS and so on. So I don't have much choice over here and I don't want to type all the time. So if I typed M, you'd see I'd get a pop-up with all of the others that started with M that I had before, which I showed in the first instance. But let's say, for example, I actually wanted this to be a pop-up, a pop-up menu. I could go to pop-up menu and now you can see I can double click on here and I can start typing the items. But I've already got a list over here. So let me delete this. And I'm going to select this in, entire column. And once again, I'm going to go to my pop-up menu. And you'll see how it's pre-populated already. And I also want to start with a blank. Okay, that's perfect. So I'm going to hit return. And now when I click up here, I've got this little pop-up menu. And like I say, okay, that one's Mac OS. This one's Mac OS and iPad OS. So very, very easy to get people to fill things in and never, ever, ever have a spelling mis mistake. Let's have a look at some of the other things we can do. So over here, I wanted to um, show whether this was completed or not. Now, I'm going to start, I'm going to use this in a formula uh, shortly. But if I select this column, one of the things I can do is make it a tick box. And now I have a little checkbox where I can click yes, no, this is completed, this is completed, this one isn't completed, and so on. Let's have a look at some of the others before we move on to the formula. But I can, let's say I want to add numbers. Let's say this is a series of numbers that you saw earlier where we're increasing in increments of, of five, for example. I could create what's called a stepper, and I can say, okay, my minimum is five. My maximum is 100, and I want it to be in increments of 5. So now, if I hit on my stepper, I can go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. Um, I could fill that down. Um, I, I selected everything. I shouldn't have done that. I should have left it empty. But now you can see I've got a stepper that will only go in increments of 5, and I can't accidentally put in 38. I can also do something similar as a slider. And the slider is very similar. It gives me a slider where I can adjust the same way. And I can give it a minimum number and a maximum number and increment and the increments. So if I say, let's make that increments of 10. Okay, start at 1, 11, 31, and so on. If I started at 0, it would be perfect increments of 10, and so on. So a lot that you can do with the formatting for here. And if you remember, because these are synced across with iOS, if you've got people filling in, um, filling in things for you in a warehouse, um, these sliders and these steppers and these tick boxes become very, very useful. Okay, so let's say, for example, um, I've got some, I'm going to format this as tick box. Um, if I check these, right? I have a visual indicator, but it doesn't really help me that much. It's just a visual indicator that I have to check. Of course, I could sort these, and I could sort by clicking here and choosing sort ascending and sorting descending, uh, which would, would sort them um, from top to bottom or bottom to top. Um, but one thing that's quite useful about tick boxes is that a tick box really is the word true and an, a, a box that's formatted as checkboxes, if it's unticked, it's false, it's checked, it's true. And if you don't believe me, I'm just going to select these and I'm going to convert these to text. And you can see the ones that were checked were true and the ones that were unchecked were false. Now, there's a couple of things that we can do with this. I could sort them, as I said before, and we've got this organized tool. So I could say, okay, let's sort it by category. I'm going to add a category and I'm going to say, you notice how it's taken the column headings over there by completed and now it's sorted them true and false. All right, I'm going to undo that for the moment. Um, but one of the things I'd like to show you over here firstly is we have something called um, conditional highlighting. So if I choose conditional highlighting, I've got a set of rules over here. So if I hit add rule, this is a text field. So I can say, okay, if the text is true, then make the cell green. Okay, and I'm going to add another rule. If the text is false, then make it red. 
Very, very simple. So now if I go in here and I say true, it changes it for me automatically. And now this is visually very, very easy for me to, to look at. So I'm going to select these again. And I'm going to change them back to um, tick boxes. Because one of the other things that we can do is we can filter. So I'm going to go to filter over here and I'm going to add a filter. I'm going to choose completed. And I'm going to say, if the text is false. Okay, so now it's only going to show me items where the text is false. Right, watch what happens. It hides all the ones that were true. Okay, so if I tick this one, scanning without a scanner, hides it, hides it, hides it, hides it, hides it. So if I've got a checklist that I'm going through and I just tick on it, it hides it. If I switch my filter off, everything's back. So again, some really nice functionality built into spreadsheet that might make your life easier rather than you having to tick it. You know, in some instances, maybe making a checkbox is almost the same as taking a, 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 a highlighter and writing on your screen for all the value that it gives you. But if you understand these things, it's pretty useful. Okay, last thing that I want to show you is that um, there are some 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 nice calculations. Um, I was going to cover three. I don't know if I'm going to have time to do all three, but one of the nice calculations is a count calculation, and there's one called count if. So if I double click in this cell and I want to know how many of these are checked and how many of them aren't, if I type equals, and that brings up my formula, and you probably notice over here every time I I, I hit the equal sign and the formula bar comes up, I've got all the formulae at my disposal over here. So if I wanted to say go logical um, and or yeah, logical is fine. Or I could just search if I didn't know what it was, if I type count, it shows me all the counts and it shows me how to use it and what happens when I do use it. So in this case, I'm going to say count and you can see I've got count, count A, count blank, count if. Now with count if it says, okay, what am I going to test? And I can always move this out the way. Okay, I want to test this column. So I'm going to test this. And I'm going to say count this if the completed column is true. Because remember, true is what happens if it's ticked. And then we have 10. So now if I want to click on that one, 11, 12, 13, and 14. So a lot of tools at our disposal to help us. Um, filter, do numerics, do calculations, organize and sort ourselves. Um, the final thing I want to show you just before we leave is I want to go back to the animals template and minimize this. So one of the challenges we've got over here is I could add these up, but what if I just wanted to get the 2005 figures, the 2006 figures, the 2007 and so on? If I was to to just make this a sum, I've been using numbers for years, but I didn't know they were all those shortcuts. <laughs> okay, good, <laughs> good, good, good. It's a lovely program. I'm very, very fond of it. That's Alan, good. there's a question in chat. What happens when I receive an Excel and want to use numbers only? And want to use numbers only. I'm so glad you asked that. I'm absolutely so glad you asked that. Um, I've got a spreadsheet over here. I want to share it just with just as with Keynote, where we could export something as a movie, as an animated GIF and so on, I could export to, oh, look, Excel. And I could save the worksheets as one per sheet or one per table, because obviously with uh, numbers, you can have individual tables on a sheet. So I could actually make a new sheet per table, or I could just do it the same way Excel does have one per sheet and I'm fine. Um, that's some of our advanced options. We can choose whether it's the, the more modern Excel format or the historical Excel format. We can export as PDF as a comma separated value file. If you know what this is, you'll use it. It's useful. Um, so this is an Excel spreadsheet. If I right click on it, I can choose open with and choose numbers and I can open up the spreadsheet in numbers. And there's my spreadsheet. 
and I do my work and then I want to say, send it out, I can export it back as Excel. So um, thank you once again, everybody for attending. It's lovely to have you here and I mean, so many of you and it's just great to have it. Have a great day. Thanks, See you Alan. on Wednesday. Thanks, Thanks Louis. Nice Alan. to see you guys. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Alan. Thank you. Thanks, Alan. Thank you. Thanks all.